What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. And today, we're going to be taking a look at how to sell your Pokemon cards and Pokemon products on Facebook Marketplace and Facebook groups. <laughs> So this topic had been really highly requested. A lot of you were dropping comments on my videos on how to sell uh, on Facebook Marketplace and Facebook groups. Um, I do around, probably around 60% of my sales on Facebook at the moment, uh, only 10% on eBay and the rest are uh, in between Mercari and Instagram. Um, so Facebook is a huge chunk of my income and I personally think it's a great, great way to sell your Pokemon cards because there is a lot less fees involved. And I'll go more into that. Uh, but this video is going to be split into three different sections. Uh, the first section is going to be about how to actually uh, navigate Facebook to get to the selling area, how to sell your Pokemon cards, um, what I do to kind of like sell on groups and on Marketplace. Uh, the second part is going to be all about money uh, to do with PayPal and transactions and all that kind of stuff. Really, really important stuff too. Uh, and the final thing is like a q and A on my Instagram last night. I asked you guys uh, if you had any questions regarding this topic, and a lot of you did. So at the end, I will be answering a lot of your questions and a lot of really, really good questions uh, that a lot of you will want to hear about. So stick around for that. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, I want to show you Facebook Marketplace first before we get to the groups. Uh, so basically, whenever you go on your web browser, it's on the left-hand side. It's really easy to find. It says Marketplace next to it. And this is kind of like my home screen for it. Um, you know, most of the picks for myself are Pokemon cards as you can see here and basically you can just go over to this area here and type in you know Pokemon cards or whatever and uh, it will come up with all these listings that are near you um, so I live in Pennsylvania so it will come up with a lot of local listings um, some of them are overpriced some of them are underpriced uh, this is a great place to kind of search outside of eBay a lot of you ask me where else to search apart from eBay Facebook marketplace is a great place uh, you just have to be careful and this is the thing that I'm gonna be drilling into your guys's head today is that you kind of have to be a little bit careful when it comes to Facebook marketplace because with Pokemon comes scammers uh, with Pokemon comes you know people who try to rip you off all that kind of stuff um, so basically you can list anywhere here so if you just cr click create a new listing you can do it that way that's really the the simplest way to do it now often I don't really sell on marketplace itself um, just because there's not that many people in my area, it seems, that are really into Pokemon. Uh, Pennsylvania is not a place I sell most of my stuff. Most of my stuff I sell in California or Texas or New York State. Uh, they're all really far away from me. So how do I get to uh, the people in those places? And I'll tell you how. Basically, I do it through Facebook groups. Now, there's tons of Facebook groups. All you have to do is if you just go to your search bar and you type in, you know, Pokemon cards you know, buy, sell, trade, uh, and it comes up with all these uh, all these groups, Pokemon buy and sell cards, Pokemon buy, sell, trade worldwide. So a lot of, there's a lot of international groups. There's a lot of United States only groups. There's a lot of Australia only groups. There's a lot of UK only groups. So no matter where you are in the world, there's definitely uh, a group for you guys. Um, so hopefully you can find one. A lot of these are just worldwide. I myself uh, sell globally, sell internationally. Um, so I don't mind going on all these global sites. So this one keeps popping up. Pokemon cards buy sell trade this is a group I use a lot um, so let's just click on it and basically as soon as you go on it what will happen is you have to be um, let into the group by one of the moderators usually they ask questions uh, just to make sure you're not a bot or a scammer or anything um, so once you're accepted into these groups what you'll have to do is you'll see this here sell something and I'm a way to show you why you only need to go on one group to do this so it posts on all groups so so early in the day I took a picture of something I wanted to sell uh, it was my classic uh, promo box and a bunch of my promo cards that I still have left. I think I only have about 20 of each left. Okay, so I've cut out the boring part of me typing everything out for you guys. Now let me explain it. So, so I've put the image uh, which I'm going to be using. So it's an image of my promos and my promo box. Um, and the most, one of the most important things in these groups is that you have to always have a timestamp. So this is an example of a timestamp. So you have your name and then you have the date there. This is to prove to people that you do have the product 
in hand at the time of posting. Um, of course, people Photoshop and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but as a good seller, you have to make sure that you always have a timestamp. Sometimes moderators will just delete your post if you don't have these. So having a timestamp is really, really crucial. Now, let's go over the title. So I said just for these. So again, it's these gym promos that you're all very familiar with by now. Um, so it says exclusive Japanese Pokemon gym promo packs sealed and authentic. Um, so this is a bit of a descriptive title. It tells you exactly what they are. It tells you that they're sealed, that they're authentic. You've got to make your title sort of captivating. Uh, I put my price at $3. They're new because they're sealed and unused. Uh, and basically this is the description just you can read it yourself and um, what I like to do um, Is I like to put in kind of like a web page to what the product is what the product has in it Especially because it's a foreign product Japanese products. Nobody in America really knows what these are so having like a you know, Bulbapedia is a really good one. It's the Wikipedia of Pokemon. Uh, it tells you exactly what these are and what cards come in them. It saves me from replying to every other person asking, hey, what do these come with? Hey, what do these come with? If people actually read the post, they'll know what it comes with. Uh, so I put in that each promos are $3 each, but if you buy more than 10, they're $2.50 each. Uh, and then I also say that the XY era box is $50. And then of course, put in shipping. So I'm trying to answer everything in the post itself to save you from having to reply to a bunch of comments because if you post in all the groups, at once, uh, it does become a little bit hectic. Uh, so you can put in product tags if you want. I don't normally put them in, but this is an example uh, that I've put in. Uh, I've actually never used product tags before. So afterwards, you just click next. And what will happen is every single Pokemon card group or Pokemon group that you're part of will pop up and you can list in up to 20 different groups that you're part of. So these are all the groups I'm part of. I think I'm part of like 12. Uh, right now um, so you can put it straight into marketplace if you want to but I try put it in absolutely everything so I just check mark absolutely everything so I can get as many people viewing my stuff as possible so if you look here it says how many members there are there's this this one here has 35,000 just alone 17,000 10,000 if you add this up you're looking at you know 60 70,000 people viewing your post or potentially viewing your post by doing it this way. And of course you can put it in marketplace too. Right now I'm not really putting anything in marketplace with COVID and everything. I don't really want to be meeting up with people. Uh, I'd much rather just ship uh, my products out so I don't have to uh, waste money on fuel. I don't have to waste time really meeting people and finding that convenience. Uh, I can just ship them and that's that's it out the way. Um, so after that, I just hit post. So you'll see now that my post is now available on the screen in front of you. And it's, and it's just really, really simple. Some of them will have to be um, checked by moderators and stuff. Some don't accept you straight away. Uh, it can take a couple minutes. It can take a couple hours. It can take until the next day because you know, you don't really expect moderators to be on Facebook modding every single post all the time. As you can imagine, uh, Facebook groups are super, super busy right now. So that's just the gist of it. That is how easy it is um, to sell on Facebook. I literally just put that up and then wait for messages to appear, wait for comments to appear. Um, you know, I'm filming this at Tuesday at 11 a.m. I'm not really sure if I'm going to get that many people looking at my stuff right now. Um, I try post um, on Fridays, Saturdays, or Sundays. Those are the best times. That's when everyone's kind of got free time on their hands. They're at home, not doing much. It's winter. Um, whereas right now, Tuesday at 11 a.m., most people are probably going to be at work. Um, so sometimes you'll get messages saying they'll message you after work or whatever. Hopefully, I'll be able to give you uh, some insight into messaging people if anyone does reply. So my first big piece of advice for you guys is to simply go out there, find Facebook groups that you can be part of and kind of put all your listings into one basket so you can spread as many times as you want. Now we'll get into the selling and other bits a little bit further down the road, but this is just the listing part. Okay, so I just wanna give you a quick example of how effective selling on Facebook can be. So uh, just after I finished recording, I looked at my messages and this person had messaged me 
so I'm just going to scroll through the conversation. So he was asking me about that post that I had sent while you guys were watching, uh, and I showed him more pictures. Uh, and I also, one good thing to note when you're selling on uh, Facebook is that you don't want to sell too many things in one post uh, because it's too cluttered otherwise that's why I only listed you know the gym promos in that box so when someone asks about something that's relatively similar I always include you know things that they also might like so for example there is this uh, I think it's Palo Sand uh, gym promo box so I said I have these two uh, boxes uh, and then I also said, I told him basically why I had left. Uh, and I also said, hey, like, there's these packs also. And so basically, he just asked uh, about how much uh, certain products were all together. So he ended up only actually buying one of these. Uh, so we changed that 40 to 20. Uh, so I sold $90 worth of these two boxes here. And then uh, one of these packs for $20 and then $5 total for uh, the promo packs. Uh, I gave him a bit of a discount on the promo packs uh, because he was buying like so many things uh, that I think uh, that was fair. Uh, so it ended up being $119 including the shipping and the shipping I think will turn out to be around $4 anyway. So $135 sale. I'm not too sure how much profit that is but I'm th estimating around $90 profit. But I mean it just goes to show you how um, how effective uh, Facebook selling can be because I think the messaging part of it is way easier than eBay, for example. eBay is so bad for messaging people, uh, but on Facebook, it's just really, really easy. So yeah, I'm really happy that <laughs> my um, demonstration actually did work. Uh, I got at least uh, $119 from uh, just that post alone. I mean, I'm sure other people, you know, it's only 1249 right now uh, in the afternoon. I'm sure other people will be coming along uh, to buy other things too. So really, really exciting. Um, so I'm glad it worked. So next, I really want to talk to you guys um, about how the transactions go down. I want to talk about how I receive my money uh, once I've sold something to so someone. So people will message you asking you if they can buy it and everything. Now, the biggest piece of advice I can give you on this is to never accept anything other than PayPal. Uh, just to protect yourself, whether you're a buyer or a seller, it doesn't matter always try go through PayPal because you know there's the convenience of Venmo and other apps um, that you can use but PayPal protects you Ven Venmo just doesn't protect you at all so we're gonna go on the PayPal website just here and a lot of people ask what's the difference between family and friends and goods and service so family and friends is kind of like for gifts you as a seller do not get charged for selling anything or giving anything you really you're not really supposed to sell anything with friends and family basically um, always sell with goods and services because um, this protects not only you but it also protects the buyer now let's look at the point of view of a buyer right now say for example you buy something off of Facebook marketplace and it's not what you thought it was at all it's a completely different set it's a fake it's uh, broken it's damaged if you pay with friends and family, you're screwed. There's no way you're getting your money back. It's done. It's dusted. The only way you can get your money back is through paying with goods and services. Um, by doing this, basically, you can get a refund. You can get your money back by providing information and evidence to PayPal that uh, you were scammed or the item was broken or something wasn't right with uh, your purchase. If someone ever says, I want to sell to you through friends and family only, they're trying to scam you. Um, they're 100% trying to scam you. I cannot tell you how many times I've had conversations with people saying, I'm sorry, I'm not buying it or selling it unless it's through goods and services and people refuse. Uh, some people will say, oh, well, I'm losing money. Well, if you're really that stuck up about losing, you know, a couple cents to a couple dollars, even if I pay the difference and you still don't want to do it, they're, they're a scammer basically. So always, always, always pay through goods and services. Now as a seller, on the screen in front of you, you can see all the stuff that you're covered with. So for example, people will often say, I never got the, uh, 
never got the item, uh, you scammed me, blah, blah, blah. Well, you can go through PayPal, you can provide them with tracking, you can provide them with all sorts of things, and they will solve it for you. Here is a whole list of requirements. I'll put it all in the description down below so you guys can go ahead and read it for yourself. But uh, it does protect not just the buyer, but also the seller. And I've never had an issue with PayPal or on Facebook Marketplace because I have gone down the route of uh, goods and services. You know, every single time I see a problem or an issue with Facebook selling, it's because someone paid with friends and family or paid via Venmo or paid with another service that isn't PayPal goods and services. Uh, you know, if you if you're selling to a friend or someone you know really, really well, I guess you can go down that friends and family route or um, if someone's really, really trustworthy. Um, but a good rule of thumb is to just do it through goods and services. It saves you a lot of time, it'll save you a massive headache, and it could save you an absolute fortune depending on how much you're selling. And for me, if, for example, I'm doing thousands of dollars in sales every month, uh, if you know I do a big sale to someone that's over a hundred dollars and they say that they didn't receive it or they charge back or something like that I could lose hundreds and hundreds of dollars So it's really worth your time worth your while Just going for goods and services now another great thing about Facebook is this page right here so people have set up pages to provide uh, feedback about how trades or buying and selling um, has gone down in the community. So basically down here you can see people who have been scammed or whatever. So this person is accusing someone else of scamming and warning the community about scams and such. This is really, really good. Uh, there's a Google Documents um, link in the description here that you can go click and research someone before you do a PayPal transaction with them or a trade or uh, buying with them or whatever it is. Um, this saves you a lot of headaches when it comes to a lot of scammers because there are probably hundreds of scammers on Facebook when it comes to Pokemon. Uh, similarly, there's another one uh, called Pokemon Trade Complaints International. It has 6,000 members on it. Um, you can see all these people who have been scammed or people who are not trusted or people who haven't fulfilled their end of the bargain. Um, and this way, it, it's just a really good way to kind of like research who you're doing business with. I mean, if you're doing hundreds and hundreds of sales, it's probably it's going to take a long time to do this. But if you're really worried and you're really new to all of this, it's better just to research who you're dealing with. And generally, if I see something really bad, someone being scammed really hardcore because people provide messages and such, I just block that person on my Facebook. So I know I'm never going to hear from that person. Um, so it's really good community. Um, there are quite a few arguments and stuff on it sometimes. Uh, but in general, it's pretty good uh, kind of having that background information. Now kind of touching on background information, another key point, another key area that you guys uh, really really need to be um, careful on and put your common sense and your own thoughts into is who you're dealing with. Be very judgmental. Uh, in the real world, being judgy is not a great thing, but when it comes to spending your money and trusting someone else with your money, um, you have to be very judgmental about it. Um, I can't tell you how many times people have tried to buy off me and they have one Facebook friend or 10 Facebook friends or they don't have a profile picture or they have some anime profile picture and they live uh, all the way across the world and they have like a couple of friends. Like I just don't sell to those people because not many people don't put their profile picture up on Facebook and also don't uh, only have like 10 friends on Facebook. Now, I'm not dissing anyone. I'm not trying to make fun of anyone here. It's just the reality. All it takes is a quick look at someone's profile when they message you to kind of like take 10 seconds to think, is this someone that looks trustworthy? Is it someone whose profile uh, looks trustworthy? The profile is the biggest thing. Um, you know, I don't really want you judging people by their looks or whatever. But at the same time, you kind of have to be judgmental about the profile pictures and the pictures they put on their Facebook. You know, you don't want uh, people putting anti-Semitic uh, flags on their Facebook or anything like that or racism, any of that kind of stuff. You can kind of filter through their posts sometimes. Um, I try to steer clear of people that I wouldn't associate myself with in real life. Um, and that has probably saved me in multiple times uh, not dealing with people who have really sketchy profiles or look sketchy. Uh, I just move on and try, you know, not think about it. 
I try my best uh, to steer clear of those people and look at the people who look like they're trustworthy and look like people I would associate with in real life. Uh, and it does sound a bit uh, snobby of me. I do agree with that, but it's also my products, my money that I'm putting on the line uh, to sell to people people I don't know. It's not like I'm on a shop front and I know I'm getting that transaction 100%. I'm having to ship it. I'm going to have to trust that they accept the shipment. And there's a lot of trust that has to go through uh, this whole thing. So I think I have the right to kind of like be a little bit judgmental. But also similarly, you have to handle yourself in a very professional manner. Uh, if you look at my post, my post is in uh, very clear English. It's not using, uh, you know, shortcuts of like the letter U instead of putting Y-O-U. You have to make yourself look presentable, look uh, knowledgeable, look uh, educated. If you look like you don't know what you're talking about or you look like someone who can't be bothered to type out a proper sentence with proper grammar, uh, people aren't going to do business with you. And I often do that as, as well, kind of like a judgmental way when I'm looking at buying stuff from people on Facebook. If they can't write proper sentences and can't do basic maths, then I'm not really going to do business with them because they haven't put in the time and the effort. Um, so I'm sounding really snobby, but at the same time, like I said before, it's your time, it's your money, it's your products. It Just do the research, do everything properly. All right, so next I have a whole bunch of questions that were given to me via Instagram. I'm going to read off them. Um, so uh, a couple of them we've probably already gone over, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to answer some of these for you. So the first one says the best groups for selling. So, so what I'm going to do is right now, I'm just going to put in all the names uh, in the screen in front of you of every single uh, group that I use, groups that I enjoy, the groups that I'm part of the most. Uh, and just kind of like a starting place for you guys. If you live in Australia or the UK, um, there's oftentimes people who sell from those areas on those pages, but I would suggest uh, you guys go and look at um, groups just specifically for the UK and specifically for Australia, because there's many, many out there. One really good question here is how to boost the algorithm so more people see your posts. Uh, the way more people see your posts is by other people liking and commenting on your posts. The best way to do it is take the best pictures possible of your product, take, a, take pictures of product people want. Uh, you know, Wizards of the Coast holographics. You know, if you're putting out sun and moon uh, regular cards, commons, uncommons, and non-holographic rares, nobody's going to care about that. Nobody's going to see the, see the posts because um, it's simply not in demand. Whereas something like these, which has got hundreds and hundreds of views, hundreds of people have asked me about these. These are unique. Nobody is selling these on Facebook Marketplace. I've never seen these on Facebook Marketplace. I'm not trying to have like a humble brag or anything, but try find something in your collection or try sell something that uh, people are after, you know, stuff like Champion's Path um, cards people were after, some shiny V cards people are after. Um, you have to realize that people are only ever going to buy stuff from you if it's something they want, you know, so you have to get those likes, you have to get those comments and make sure your post is detailed. You know, if you just put Charizard holographic and that's your description, no one's going to care. Put details in. What condition is the card in? What set is everything from? Try to give people as much information as possible so you're not always replying to comments. Um, that's, that's the most information I give you is uh, in terms of the algorithm. I don't honestly know the exact way, but every single time I've got the more likes and more comments on something, more people have messaged me about it. Those that have no comments and no likes on it, nobody has bought from me. Now, the biggest question I was asked uh, was, are there any fees? What are the fees like? What are they like compared to eBay and TCG player? Um, so the fees on Facebook are zero. They take none of your money. Facebook sees absolutely not a single cent of your money uh, from sales on here, which is why I use it the most. Uh, the only way uh, you lose a tiny bit of your sale is uh, when you use PayPal goods and service. I believe it's 3% of your sale. But if you compare that to eBay where it's 13% of your sale, uh, it's a massive difference. And more often than not, uh, you get really good buyers and they cover the fee for you. So you're not even losing any money. Uh, you know, I've saved probably probably over a thousand dollars now by selling on Facebook compared to eBay, uh, especially when it comes to bigger ticket items such as, uh, you know, vintage packs or bulk selling these, you know, if I sold 
uh, $100 worth of these on eBay, I would lose $13 from that. Whereas if I'm selling only on uh, Facebook and I'm selling through goods and services, I'm only losing $3 from that. So it is a massive difference. Um, so keep that in mind. Facebook is really good because there are no fees attached to it. Um, the only bad thing about Facebook is that you have to do all the shipping by yourself. You know, eBay kind of like points you towards the labels. Uh, you have to create all the all your own labels, uh, which is not really that hard to do, to be quite honest with you. I did a shipping video not that long ago about how to ship your uh, print your labels and ship to people. Um, so, but if you're new to shipping, then this can be a bit daunting. But uh, yeah, the, it's really good in terms of fees and stuff. Someone asked about finding prices for cards to sell on uh, to sell on Facebook. Um, the way I, I look at it is I just go on eBay and look at sold listings, uh, quite honestly, and I use TCG Player too. The prices are changing all the time, of course, there's uh, differences in price, uh, but people negotiate a lot on Facebook. It's kind of like a, a, kind of like a fleet market in that way where you kind of... Uh, barter with one one another okay so the next question is how to deal with people lowballing you on facebook now people love to do that on facebook people love to get deals on facebook because ebay has become uh basically a bit too expensive for a lot of people and that's why a lot of people have turned to facebook um so let's just take this for example if i was selling this for a hundred dollars I'm gar I guarantee you someone would try ask me, uh, can they get this for, you know, like $50? Uh, even if the last eBay sold listing was like 120, what you gotta do is you just try, gotta convince people why your price is right. Use eBay list sold listings, screenshot it, uh, screenshot from other areas of, uh, you know, like Macari or something. You just have to provide evidence that your, your cards or your product is actually worth that. You know, some people, uh, just try get really good deals even though they know that that product is worth more than what they offered uh it, it, it happens to me all the time um more often than not i try my very best to keep people interested so i'll say hey i'll throw in extra cards uh hey i'll give you free shipping um just to try entice them a little bit more uh it's just very annoying there's just a lot of people who out there who want something uh, really really cheap to kind of like resell i guess um, but that's just the way Facebook is at the moment. Um, but you know, every marketplace is kind of the same. It's just uh, something you have to deal with. Uh, how to convince people to ship internationally. So this is a difficult one because people who don't normally ship internationally are very scared of shipping internationally. So I do ship internationally, um, but I have to deal with, you know, customs forms. I have to deal with how expensive, how you know, figuring out how much it costs to ship to you, uh, all that kind of stuff. It's very difficult to convince someone who has never done it before to do it for you. Um, it's just, it's it's very, very difficult. Uh, there's no exact way to convince someone to do it. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, negotiating with people, swearing at you and being rude. Uh, yeah, so the big problem with Facebook, I find, is that there's a lot of... Uh, this is a rude word, but like degenerate people um, who are on there who are just like the rudest, biggest arseholes in the world. And you just have to deal with it. If someone ever is rude to you, swears at you, calls you a name, a bad name or whatever, I would just block them and move on. Um, like I said earlier in the video, uh, I only deal with people who I would associate with outside of, uh, you know, Facebook, like in real life. I wouldn't mind talking with them. I wouldn't mind hanging out with them. Um, you know, if you, if someone is like uh, belittling you or calling you names or whatever, would you be friends with them in real life? No. So why would you sell them? Just ignore them. Uh, the worst thing you can do is probably get into like a Facebook fight because it's bad for your image as a seller or a buyer. Um, you know, you don't really want to be seen fighting with people on Facebook. So the next question is how to differentiate your product from other people's products. And that's a really good question is, you know, it's very, very difficult uh, because, you know, Facebook marketplace is just so saturated with Pokemon product right now, similar with eBay, you know, trying to get your product to be a little bit different either by price point or by offering free shipping. One of the best ways is actually to take better pictures than other people. People suck at taking pictures. They undervalue how important it is to take a clear, non-grainy close-up picture and provide quick responses. You know, if you want to kind of like have that unique selling point, be someone who replies really quickly. Be someone who offers resolutions to um, 
you know, buying and selling, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it doesn't just have to be your product. You know, I've got a lot of people now who kind of just come to me for everything because I'm quick at shipping and quick at replying. Um, so kind of like be that be that person, differentiate yourself rather than just your products. Now, the last question was about claim sales, auctions. How do all of that work? So claim sales is a really big and really popular thing uh, on Facebook right now. So basically people, what they do is they get, uh, let's just, for example, take these cards. They'll say this Dragonite's worth $2, this Rayquaza's worth $2, this Grudon's worth $3. And what they'll do is they'll post in the comments all these pictures of cards and they'll say Dragonite $2. And what happens is the first person to comment claim on it uh, basically wins the auction. It's kind of like a no, it's not really an auction, but they get that card. And at the end of the claim sale, once they've finished posting everything, they'll contact you or you contact them in regards to buying the product. Um, so basically, it's the first person who comments on that specific post to get the card, um, which is really, really cool. It's a good way to get rid of product really, really fast. Um, you know, that is one of the most popular um, kind of sales going on on Facebook right now. It usually uh, gets the most likes, it gets the most comments, all that kind of stuff. So it boosts the algorithm for someone. Um, as for auctions, I would only ever enter auctions when someone is doing it live with like a face cam in front of them. Uh, that way there's a recording of it. Um, but just be careful with claim sales and auctions and stuff. You actually have to pay for them. Else you'll be one of those people appearing on the trade feedback thing saying, you know, uh, Daniel or Pokey Jebel didn't pay for his claim sale uh, minus one for Pokey Jebel. So when people search your name, they'll say, okay, uh, Pokey Jebel's a really bad buyer. He didn't pay for his claim sale. I'm not going to be uh, ever listening to him again so you know be be aware that when you do enter these kind of auctions and claim sales you will have to be uh paying for everything so i think i've covered a lot this is going to be such a long video i've been talking for like 50 minutes to my camera hopefully i can cut that down a little bit but hopefully this helped you guys out. I'm sure I've missed things along the way. So in the comments down below, please, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to help you guys. I uh, hope this gave you some insight as to what buying and selling on Facebook is like. And I've given you a couple tips and tricks along the way, or I hope I have anyway. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys very, very much. I think we have this Japanese shiny uh, set coming in on Thursday or Friday. So uh, I'll be opening that on the channel as kind of like a relaxing themed uh, uh, video rather than one of these really long uh, videos here. So thank you so much as always. I appreciate you guys. Have a great rest of your week. Take care.